Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, in this platform, we shall be focusing on a geometric uh, sequence or and also the geometric series actually, um, which is uh, one of the most important part that we have in our syllabus that we are supposed to consider. So I'm going to work with, an, uh, with a question, which is uh, from the Eastern Cape September 2020 uh, exams. Yeah, which is one of the best person papers that I am having here uh, that I want us to work with so that we can at least learn how to attempt these typical questions. So not wasting much time, let us quickly rush through the questions. We had the question which was on question number three, it was actually on uh, on the geometric there. Uh, we are given, given the series, write down the series in sigma notation. Uh, if all powers of four, are removed from the series. All right. Uh, naturally, just looking at it, it was, as you can see, there's a difference of one. It was actually geometric. It was actually an arithmetic, sorry for that, an arithmetic. There's a common difference there. But the moment we remove the powers of four here, the moment the powers of four are being removed, that makes it to be a combination of an arithmetic and a geometric at the same time. All right. Uh, having a difference of one, because here we, we are having a difference of one throughout. It's a difference of one throughout. Uh, we start with one, two, three. There's a difference of one throughout. It was supposed to be a summation of this nature. I can even do it here, 3.1. It was just supposed to be a summation like this of N, from N being equal to one, because if you substitute N is equal to one, you get one. From N is equal to one to the last term, which is uh, 5,000. That's our last term here. But now we are supposed to remove the powers of four. Okay, so what are you supposed to do? Which powers of four do we have from these numbers from one up to 5,000? Okay, let's start the powers of four. We've got four to the power of zero, which is one. Okay, you can, you, you are, we are actually testing them. Four, let's start with the first one. Four to the exponent of zero, we get a one. We move on to the other one, four to the exponent of uh, one, which is actually four. Some up all those. Okay, so this is what we actually need. So we've got four to the exponent of one, four to the exponent of two, four to the exponent of three, four to the exponent of four, four to the exponent of five. Let's try, maybe we are now almost there. Four to the exponent of five, that's 1,024. Okay, four to the exponent of six, which is 4,096, so four to the exponent of six is there. All right, then we've got uh, four to the exponent of seven, which is 16,000. So as you can see, it's now bigger than 5,000. We must get up to 5,000, but our answer here is 16,300, which is bigger than, so that means this is no longer there. So these are the exponents of four that we are going to remove from four to the exponent of zero, up to four to the exponent of six. All right, so how are we going to write this part alone? What are we going to do? If we are to check here, because we, are, we need to subtract these terms. Okay, how many are they? Okay, let's calculate them. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it means we've got seven terms there. So we are going to subtract the summation of four to the exponent of what? Remember, we are supposed to start with our n being equal to one, okay? So if our n is being equal to one, I want us to see here, this is four to the exponent of zero. So instead of having four to the exponent of one, it is going to be four to the exponent of n minus one, so that we get a zero, so that if we substitute a one here, it's one minus one, which is, as zero. So this expression is going to be written as four to the exponent of n minus one. Starting from n is equal to one. This is where we are going to start when n is equal to one. Up to which term of n that we are going to have because we are supposed to have the last term as four to the exponent of six. So to have six, it means n minus one like this must be equal to six. So n is going to be equal to six plus one, which is n is seven. So take note there guys, here, take note here. All right, so your n 
the last term is going to be a seven. So that is the summation that you simply needed, guys. These are the ones that you're going to remove uh, from this expression. And that was actually four marks for that. Okay, 3.2, given that the following two geometric series are convergent, the moment we are dealing with a convergent series, we are talking about the sum to infinity there. Determine the values of x for which the sum of the two series is equal to eight. All right. When it is a convergent, that's the sum to infinity that you're dealing with. So we have got, we have got two uh, series that we have and they are convergent and we are given that the sum of these two should be equal to eight. So it simply means that the sum to infinity of the first one plus the sum to infinity of the second one should be equal to the number that we are given, which is eight. All right, but we know that the sum to infinity is given by the formula A over one minus R. So it's A over one minus R. So let's start with the first one and see what you're going to have. So the sum to infinity of the first one is equal to what A, what is our A on the first series that we have here? Our A, if we are to check, we are, we are dealing with this one. Okay, our A, that's the first term which is a one here, yeah, the first term that's a one. So we are going to have one. So sorry for that. So our A is going to be one over one minus R. So take note, where do we have our R? R is equal to T2 divided by T1 for each geometric series. Okay, we divide T2 by T1. Uh, our T2 in this case is X. All right, so we're going to divide this is T1, this is T2. So it's X divided by one, that's our R. So X divided by one, that's X. So that one is not going to change, it's just going to be X. All right, so we are going to have X. So we have written in terms of X. We move on to the other one. The sum to infinity of the second one is this still the same thing, one over uh, one, the first term, one minus R. So it's going to be one minus R. Let's check for the second series. Uh, what is our R here? Our R is going to be the second term, which is negative X divided by one, which is negative X. So this one is going to give us negative X. So as we can see, negative X plus, negative and negative, that's the plus here. So which means the sum to infinity of the second series is one over one plus X. All right, then we are given that the first one plus the second one should give us an eight. So that's formulating an equation. All right, sorry for that guys, it's because I'm sharing the screen. So everything that happens on my screen, it reflects there. All right, so we are going to add the two. The first one and the second one. The first one, which is one over one minus X plus the second one, which is one over one plus X. It must be equal to eight. So that's an equation. We have formulated an equation and this can actually enable us to solve for X. So now let's deal with this equation alone. How are we going to solve this equation? As we know, if you are dealing with fractions, we can clear fractions by multiplying each and every term by the LCD, or you can actually collect like terms by, uh, you can actually add the two terms here, the two fractions by finding the LCM of these two, which is one minus X into one plus X. So remember your addition, you divide, okay? If you divide here, this one minus X and one, plus one, one minus X will cancel, you remain with uh, one plus X because this and this will cancel. So you're going to remain with one plus X times one, which is just one plus X plus one plus X and one plus X will cancel, which means you are going to remain with one minus X. All right, which is equal to eight. Collect like terms here, what are you going to have? One plus one, that's a two. So you're going to have two X minus X, that's a zero in there, over one minus X into one plus X is equal to eight. All right, this is a nice type of a question here. We got something like this, A squared minus B squared from our difference of two squares. We know that this is A minus B, A plus B. This is the same format that we have a one minus X here, one plus X. So this was actually taken from a squared minus B squared, which is a difference of two squares. So this was one squared minus X squared of which one squared is one minus X squared. So 
That means I can be able to rewrite this expression as one minus x squared instead of writing it as that. And this is same as over one. You've got a whole number, every whole number, it can be written as over one. So now you've got an equation that you can actually solve by cross multiplying both sides. That means that one and the two, eight times one. So this eight is going to multiply everything. So it's eight times one, which is eight, eight times minus x squared, which is minus eight x squared. So to solve for x, I can just transpose the negative eight so that it can be a positive on this side, which is positive eight squared is equal to two to this side, which is going to be a negative two. So it's eight minus two, which is six. Divide by eight both sides. So x squared is going to be six over eight. All right, just introduce the square root to remove the square. Take note guys, there's a square there. So by introducing the square root, we are going to have the equivalent of the answer that we need that we need here, which is the square root of the fraction six over eight. Knowing that the square root of any number is a plus or minus. So it's going to be plus or minus, which is plus or minus. Yes, that's a plus or minus there which is square root of three over two.